Welcome to the Troy Stober Show. You don't have to listen, but you're going to hear about it anyway. You don't have to listen, but you're going to hear about it anyway. And so the Troy Stober Show is a vidcast. Uh, You can listen to it like a podcast, and it'll be posted on Podbean. But if you want to get the most out of it, you're probably going to have to watch it on TV. Uh, My name is Troy Stober, and I'm your host of the Troy Stober Show. Today we have Cameron Kearns with us. Cameron is a physical fitness uh, geek, and he's actually um, been kind enough to show up today for me to interview. Uh, He works over at Nautilus Plus here in Oregon City, and uh, I got a lot of questions for him to find out about how things are going. Uh, Before we get started, um, I want to tell you that the Troy Stober Show is sponsored by Cox Electric. Uh, Cox Electric is located in Salem, Oregon, and they are your source for electrical contracting for commercial wiring, lighting installation, and other electrical needs. Um, Cox Electric can be found online at coxelectricoregon.com. Cox Electric, get lit. Okay, so, um, and by get lit, I mean, they did the Woodburn Outlet parking lot. Did you know that? I didn't know that. So it's a beautiful new parking lot with lots of extra lighting. So thank you to Cox Electric. That's awesome. All right, Cameron, let's start out by talking about your background. Um, just tell me kind of where you're from, how you grew up, and, and kind of where your, your story begins. So I am actually from Moscow, Idaho. Usually if I just say Moscow, people assume Russia. Don't know why, but they do. And so moved to Oregon when I was about six years old. And then my, I kind of grew up in the fitness industry in a way. My mom started out bodybuilding. My dad was doing powerlifting and bodybuilding. So just kind of watching them get stronger and everything else was a huge, huge inspiration for me. And then one thing led to another and I just kind of fell into the fitness industry. Where, where did you um, like graduate from high school? Were you in Oregon City by that time? So I went to grade school and middle school in Oregon City, and then I went to high school in Gladstone. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, As you entered the physical fitness industry, um, did you have to get, like, certain training or certifications or, like, kind of how – I mean, did you actually go to college and get a degree and stuff, or how that all work? No. So kind of what happened is, well, ironically, um, I had approached my – folks about opening up some sort of CrossFit gym in the area. Um, I knew that they had a building attached to Nautilus that was just completely empty. So at the time I was working in the service industry, I had always been a big advocate for fitness. Um, I had been helping my friends get in the better shape, um, a few friends that were trying to get into the military. So I'd always kind of had a passion for helping people. I just didn't know what degree that would be. Um, As I approached them about opening up CrossFit Gym, it was probably about 10 years ago. They kind of weren't interested at the time. CrossFit was just kind of one of those fads, it seemed like. Mm -hmm. So they thought maybe it's just going to be one of those things that died off. And and wasn't your mom, at that point, if I remember correctly, because I know a little bit of Cameron's story, uh, wasn't your mom kind of finishing up her bodybuilding career and kind of doing more aerobics? Like she does... um, Zumba, right? Zumba. That, that's yeah, like her that's, thing. That's her thing now. Okay. And and they do that kind of in the, the studio part of the Nautilus Plus. Correct. Um, just give me a, a overview of CrossFit. Um, but from the sounds of it, it hasn't been around for a long, long time. It's actually been around a lot longer than you think. Um, I think right around 80s or 90s is when it first, like, when they basically got everything together. Um, and then from there, it didn't really blow up until around, I want to say 2007, 2008, when they started showing the CrossFit games on ESPN. Ah, okay. okay. And everything just kind of blew oh. up from there. Yeah. You've okay, probably wait seen a minute it. now. Okay, so is this, is this like, I think I know what this is. Is this like, just kind of like, cr- oh, the light bulb, folks, the light bulb went on. So this is like those guys in the gym who are like doing all those stations, right? Like who are doing like ropes and they're doing strength and medicine ball like all that stuff in a way yeah it's a way to kind of fuse olympic weightlifting a lot of gymnastics movements like handstand push-ups uh, now they have people doing handstand walks onto things and all sorts of uh, crazy okay. things okay. Uh, but yeah it's just a combination of that kind of throwing it all into one high intensity style workout 
Okay, perfect. That's a great way to put it. High intensity style workout. Um, and so in a way, this was kind of like an evolution of strength and conditioning with aerobic exercise. And, you know, at one time I, I actually enjoyed body attack where I got to use um, some strength and conditioning with aerobic exercise. But this probably takes it to a, another extreme. Although it just seems like it's got more variety of stuff that you can do. It does. And the nice thing about it is that you can make it as easy as you want it or as hard as you want it. You could take a workout that's 20 minutes long and just kind of go through the motions, which I usually start a lot of people out doing mm -hmm. just so they can learn how to do everything correctly. Once they can do that, once they show they can do things correctly, then we kind of ramp up the intensity. Let's just kind of ease in your way and stuff like that. Uh, here on the Troy Stober Show, uh, we try uh, various ways to improve your life. Uh, we, we focus on personal improvement, um, various uh, nutritional aspects, uh, physical fitness aspects, um, therapeutic aspects. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty impressed with what I'm hearing about CrossFit, and it's actually inspired me to want to maybe try this out a little bit myself. Um, your mom, when I talked to her, uh, she said they call you the CrossFit coach. You're not like the trainer or the instructor. Um, is, that, is that by design or what's, what's the is that yeah, just terminology? I, I would consider myself more of a strength coach, uh, mainly because we do a fair amount of strongman, which is just... Tell me about that too. What's, what's the strongman program and how does that fit into the whole physical fitness picture? So strongman is more focused on kind of how it says strength, but it's lifting odd objects. I don't know if you've ever seen World's Strongest Man. You've probably heard of oh, The yeah. Mountain, um, Half Lord Bjornsson. Huge advocate right now for Strongman. He's like the big thing right now. Um, Bill Kazmaier back in the day was the big name back in about 70s, 80s. Okay. Uh, but it's kind of learning how to lift odd objects, which is great. So things like Atlas Stones, which is just giant balls of concrete. Mm -hmm. um, implements called logs, which are giant you sometimes wooden cylinders shaped like a log that you're then cleaning and pressing overhead. I always try to tell people to at least give it a try because when it comes to lifting things, not everything is shaped like a barbell. True that, true that. And you can, I mean, you find that there's um, a great deal of strength and conditioning benefit that people get from doing this. Because, you know, I do remember like in the 80s and 90s, um, it seemed kind of like a novelty, like, you know, the guy was trying to pull the, the semi-trailer or whatever, yeah. you know, um, and it was entertaining and, you know, he's on the Guinness Book of World Records and stuff like that. Yeah. But it never really occurred to me that, you know, that would be a um, like a viable workout. But, but yeah. people, when they're done, they feel like, you know, great sense of accomplishment. They feel like they've got a good workout in. Yep. Okay. To kind of give you an example, a lot of like CrossFit workouts, they can be a little bit longer. So anywhere from let's say five to over an hour of a workout where you're just trying to kind of get through it as much as you can. Um, strongman is more of a weighted sprint. So either trying to get as many reps as you can in about a minute, normally that's how long each event is, but that's at a much heavier weight. So it's a little bit more intense. Okay, okay. Um, Interesting. Yeah, it's a it's a blast. It kind of gives you an opportunity to pick up giant balls of concrete and deadlift <laughs> vehicles, which is always fun, right? Somebody once told me um, the best thing that you can be doing is the thing that you're not doing. Right. Like for me, I should probably be doing more long distance running, but I'm not built for that. <laughs> right. Built for short distances. I don't know if you see the noodles here, but you know they're just not. Oh, I got. It's a different kind of tra like your training. To me would be horrible and my training to you would be absolutely horrible it just depends on the person and kind of how you train there you have it all right well that's very interesting um so we got a little snapshot of crossfit strongman training so you're um actually located in oregon city right over by um the what street is that on? Beaver Creek or? Beaver Creek, yeah. Beaver Creek. Can you give me some idea of what to expect in terms of results? Like how does this physically, and I'll get to the mental part too, but how does this physically help you um, improve yourself fitness-wise? So with CrossFit, it's basically improving on everything. So not only your cardio endurance, but then your muscle endurance, muscle size. A lot of it just really depends on the individual. And a lot of it's going to really kind of come down to what you're eating, 
how much you're eating, what you're eating for, whether you're trying to get big and strong, if you're trying to stay lean or just survive. The, 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 so the fact that I like tacos a lot is not oh, not going to help a lot here? Is yeah. that what you're, hmm. You can eat pretty much anything in moderation. I mean, if you're living on an <laughs> all taco diet... That's that's what I've found. I've actually found that you can. I mean, um, and I guess the other thing is like certain things motivate you. So the hardest part is just getting started because yeah. once you start to see results, that's oh man, that's so gratifying. Mm-hmm. I, I really appreciate that. And that's the thing is, <laughs> it's great. an outlet for people, but it's a positive outlet, and I think that's what's so great about it. I mean, at the at the end of a workout, a good workout, yeah. you know, instead of being just kind of frayed and disorganized. You know, things are kind of coming together. And um, here on the Troy Stober Show, we call that Din Bar. Um, so you got to make a little thumb like this, okay? And you got to put it over your heart. Din Bar, okay? Din Bar. All right. We... Well, Cameron, thanks again for being here. And um, as part of the uh, Troy Stober vidcast, we have some uh, regular segments that we do on the show. One of them is the... Uh, inspirational quotes. I'm going to share my computer with you. Okay. Um, so you're going to be uh, given the opportunity to choose from um, any of these uh, special quotes that I've prepared for you. Okay. You can have one from Conor McGregor, one from RBG, from Rocky himself, or Tim Tebow. And actually, I don't know if it's actually from Tim Tebow, but he's the only guy who okay. I know who said <laughs> right. that, so I think it might be from Tim Tebow. Uh, do any of those guys interest you? Or um, I'm them? going to have to go with Conor McGregor just because I like to always see what he says. <laughs> Okay, so this is what Conor McGregor has. And by the way, if you just Google Conor McGregor quotes, um, you will come up with some fantastic stuff. Oh, yeah. and, and it's very entertaining and it's very um, it's very relevant if you're into physical fitness or, or just wellness in general. But what he says is, the more you seek the uncomfortable, the more you will become comfortable. What do you think of that? Absolutely. That's how you grow, is becoming uncomfortable. I think I would become a little uncomfortable if I decided to try something new and try one of your programs, CrossFit or Strongman Training. But like he says, you know, the more I kind of got into it, I think the more comfortable I would be with it. Um, it's by experience, I can tell you it's worked that way with other things that I've tried off the, off the beaten path. So that would be kind of cool. It's fun. I mean, you have no reason not to. It's kind of what it comes down to. See, now, here's the thing. I One of, one of the things about um, just jogging, you can do that outside anytime, mm-hmm. you know. And, um, and in fact, that probably would be just a good thing to kind of do for maintaining stuff, um, you know, because then, then I can eat some tacos and yeah. not have to worry about it. You won't feel bad about it. <laughs> I forgot to tell you. One other thing I was going to mention. Uh, across the street and down a little ways is Coin Toss Brewing. Do you know where that is? Yes. Okay, so... Pale It Forward is another sponsor of the Troy Stober Show. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, well, we're still in the pandemic. During the height of the pandemic in 2020, um, there was a very special brew that was started at Coin Toss Brewery, um, and it's known as Pale It Forward. So there was one kind of cool thing that came out of, of the uh, real bummer that was the uh, the worldwide pandemic. Right. Okay, so we got a good beer. Um, have you ever had that yet? Perfect. No, not yet. Well, you go down there and you tell them Troy Stober sent you. Okay. <laughs> They'll probably make you pay double. <laughs> well, that won't tell me anything. It's so good. Uh, yeah. It's just, oh, man. And a lot of the IPAs you drink, they're really bitter and they're really heavy and they're just full of, like, garbage taste. So clear, so crisp. I got a keg of it for the Super Bowl. Oh, nice. And I was able to drink it all afternoon with my hamburgers and everything. So, so it's an easy drinker. Easy There's, drinker. Okay. Tim Hole is the guy over there who is in charge of Coin Toss Brewery. So I want to thank them for being a sponsor of the Troy Stober Show. All right. We got vocabulary words up next. Um, this is where I give you a choice of four words. And by the way, if you know any of the words, you're kind of supposed to skip them. Now, you probably, I know that you're brilliant. And you probably have known all these. Which word do you think you understand the least and you would like it? Here, let me, let me, let me read them out loud. Yeah, because so, yeah, um, I can't pronounce them, so we're good. <laughs> Never heard these before. Furtive. Okay. Furtive. Magnanimous. I've heard, mag- I've heard people say magnanimous. Mercurial or tacit. I will have to go with magnanimous. Magnanimous it is. Okay, 
Magnanimous, generous or forgiving, especially toward a rival or less powerful person, benevolent or charitable. Okay, so this is somebody who is magnanimous when they do something for, their, for others or they're really known to be genuine and giving and they sacrifice for other people. Does that sound, sound accurate? Yeah. Forgiving, especially, or forgiving. Especially toward a rival or less powerful person. So it's it's not just generosity. It's specific generosity toward people you wouldn't have to necessarily be generous right. to. That's pretty cool. Got do you think? Garage. Do you think you'll ever use the word magnanimous? Absolutely not. No. Okay. Well, I. I mean, you never know. If you want to confuse someone, then absolutely. If, if the Troy Stober show becomes really famous, then you're going to have to use that in your everyday common vernacular. You'll just have to get shirts that say yeah, magnanimous. magnanimous. And then people will ask you, and then you'll just, you know, it'll become ingrained in your mind because you'll have to explain it every time. No, I told Troy Stober about that on the show. and uh, No, so um, is it possible? Let me ask you this. Yeah. Is the premise that you expanding your vocabulary – in a very small way, isn't it um, promoting good communication skills and better understanding? Or is that just like me, like pie in the sky? Because honestly, how many vocabulary words are we really going to have to learn if we're going to make, you know, that assertion a reality? I, <laughs> I think with a lot of new words, it starts, you start by using it sarcastically. Okay. And then it just kind of becomes part of your vocabulary. Okay. Okay. Well, I want to be magnanimous to some people, but then there's other rivals. Uh, all those people who are mean to me in junior high. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. See? No, we're not. That's we're not, not very magnanimous of you. Thank you. See? You're, you you're being very magnanimous by letting me know that, so I appreciate <laughs> that very much. Okay, one more segment and. Then we are going to take a little breather. Um, the next thing I have is a favorite here at the Troy Stober Show. It's Art Vault. Art Vault is brought to you by the Willamette Coffee House. Um, it's on exit 6, the 10th Street exit in Westland. Um, they have long bottom coffee in there, and they treat me really good, and they smile, and they make my morning. So... Uh, what you have to do, uh, and by the way, thank you for the free t-shirt. I'm not wearing it. I'll put that puppy on at some point, okay? Willamette Coffee House for all your coffee needs. Fancy wine labels, football helmets, pictures losing it, or Simpsons analogs. What do you want to go with, my friend? I think I will go with football helmets. Football helmets. Oh, this is going to be great. So are you familiar with concept helmets or like concept uniforms and stuff like that? No. So it turns out that um, nerds, geeks, nerds and geeks like me who are kind of into sports but are also very creative, uh, come up with alternative um, uh, uniforms uh, using the same color scheme, often the same logos or alternative logos. And so what we do is, um, you know, since we were kids, you know, the um, – the logos of our favorite sports teams have always been pretty much the same. And so um, there have been attempts um, over the years uh, in various capacities for um, artists to make concept logos, concept football helmets in this case. So I have some National Football League uh, helmets that I'm going to show you. And what I want you to do is just – do you, do you know what the, the regular helmet of the Atlanta Falcons is? No. It's like a black helmet with like a – here, let me show you. So it kind of looks like that. Okay. Um, they were just in the Super Bowl a couple years ago. They lost to the Patriots. Are you not – you you told me you're a football fan. I that, was. That right there, see how that, that little – Yeah. Was that too loud, by the way, sound man? I just kind of yelled. Okay, sorry about that. Um, that logo right there is like the Falcon logo. Okay. Um, and so this is kind of like a reversed um, uh, color. So this is actually usually black, but that's kind of what it looks like, uh, like their regular helmet. So the concept uh, artists are kind of coming up with alternative designs to what the um, helmet might look like, and they're trying to jazz it up just a little bit. So oh, this one actually looks like the Atlanta Hawks. Um, yeah, it does. Like basketball. <laughs> 
<laughs> very creative. So they, they are creative. And like I, what I've noticed is that a lot of the bird ones, like the um, the eagles and the cardinals, you know, they kind of keep coming up with feathers everywhere. Yeah. So it's, it's getting a little bit old. But anyway, see how they got the, the bright red and stuff and yeah. they offset it with the black um, face mask. Okay, so who else do we have on here? We got the Broncos, and the Broncos have kind of a, um, a orange sort of an accent color, mm. and here's where they put the helmet in the actual accent color of orange, which looks pretty sharp with that kind of metallic yeah. blue on there. Here they actually feature the Rocky Mountains up there. Isn't that cool? It just looks like Coors Light to me. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wonder, so like when they're when they're getting hot and they're like in the middle of the you know the game, mm -hmm. does this turn white then up here? And it's only it's only cold at the I beginning. Would, of the it would game. have to be. It's the only thing that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and you probably recognize that. That's like yeah. the, the logo. But it's, it's big and bold, and it's got, like, you know, accent colors to it. So, well, let's hear it for the Denver Broncos. Got a few more. Let's see. Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, so Jacksonville, boy, they had this kind of – this right here reminds me of, like, what they normally look like, although right. it's, it's black. But they have that Jacksonville logo. That's pretty cool. Don't you like the color? No, I like that one. This one has like a little bit of like skin, cheetah skin underneath there. I think um, I like that one the best. This this one is um, kind of interesting because this concept uh, artist went and um, tried to figure out like what all the helmets would look like if they were teams from Star Wars. <laughs> That's awesome. So so this is like the Wookies, but it's actually um, in the design of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Got some cheetah skin, not or uh, jaguar, uh, probably jaguar skin. Definitely. Is a jaguar diff different than a cheetah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, there you go, man. Isn't that cool? That looks pretty cool. I like the Jacksonville Jaguars. I know. That one just kind of looks like Dennis Rodman's hair. <laughs> okay, Kansas City. I, so now I should have started with like a, what a regular helmet looks like so that you can see like what oh, they're... I used to watch football for okay, so years and years. In my opinion, Kansas City has one of the most milk toast. That's another vocabulary word. Uh, ordinary, run-of-the-mill routine uh, helmets. So if you kind of put it in, it's like a metallic red. That looks pretty cool right yeah. there. So uh, as we show this stuff, I'm going to be uh, showing the, the viewers at home. Again, kind of a milk toast, but it has kind of a bold color scheme to it. And there's like the, the yellow accent color. So anyway. Kansas City, you have uh, a long way to go before you impress me with your helmets because yeah. those helmets are – they're plain. Looks Eric, like a high school team. Eric, my little friend from childhood, he loves the Chiefs, so don't take that personally, okay? But you guys could use a little upgrade. Um, I'm just – I'm throwing that out there. Here we go, Miami. So Miami has the Dolphins, and again, like this looks – this looks a little bit like their helmet now, only it's a little bit more silver, and okay. it's got a little bit more waves here. Um, so this is even a little bit jazzier than it normally would be, but that kind of resembles what the normal helmet looks like. So that's a that's a significant upgrade right there. But what they have is like this kind of coral color. See how they put that on the face mask there, mm -hmm. and they got the top of the dolphin. But the, the coral color is pretty cool. I think do they call that eggshell. I don't know. Look at that. It's got, like, the sunset. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It is. It's hard to make a dolphin look intimidating. I was just thinking badass. that. I was just thinking that. You know, it just looks like a regular fish. So, mm, I don't know. Oh, there we go. <gasps> look at that. It's got, like, coral. And then it looks, it's got that kind of water. Huh? Yeah. I That's mean, pretty cool. Still not intimidating. No. But, you know, the concept artist is not here for intimidation. The concept artist is here for creativity. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cameron. <laughs> All right. We got one more. Philadelphia. Um, let's see. The Yodas. So this is the same color scheme. Again, they went and did the uh, the Star Wars theme. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's pretty good. I like that. Doesn't that look like the organ? It does. Like, it looks like the ducks. They got the, uh, they got the feathers and stuff. This is kind of similar to what they have now, only it's like a big, bold logo. That's probably, of the um, of the concept artist tricks, making the logo big and bold is like the standard. That's that's their easiest thing to do. Yeah. Um, or just kind of like, you know, adjusting the color just a little bit. But that, does, that looks cool, too. I like that one. 
That looks somewhat fierce. Yeah, it's an intimidating bird. So interestingly, I did. I I was watching Monday Night Football recently, and the Eagles were playing. And what they said was that um, the official logo of the Eagles is um, actually facing to the left, and all the other logos in the National Football League are facing to the right. So that's what they told me. Yeah. Can you huh. believe it? No. So, like, when you see it uh, on ESPN and, and in the news and stuff like that, the official logo is just like that, only it's facing the other way. Okay. little trivia for you here on the Troy Stober Show. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much to – who sponsors this? Well, I'm at Coffee House. You know what? About halfway – on my commute in the morning is the Lamont Coffee House, and those people make my day. Um, they gave me an extra shot of espresso this morning, and I do appreciate that. So um, we want to thank them for being part of the Troy Stober Show. And that's going to do it for our show today. Uh, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Troy Stober Show. Uh, again, my guest today was Cameron Kearns. Uh, thank you for being here. Of course. Um, it's been a pleasure uh, learning about uh, CrossFit, Strongman, uh, your background. Uh, and thank you for p- participating in our segment. Um, any closing thoughts uh, for people who are interested in uh, trying out uh, CrossFit or Strongman training? Um regarding the, the benefits and, and how it might fit into their physical fitness uh, plan? I mean, the biggest thing is being active. I mean, it's awesome to try new things. CrossFit's one of those things that can be very intimidating to people, especially if you've seen it on ESPN, if you've heard about it. There's a lot of horror stories about people, you know, as soon as it starts, someone's got to take their shirt off and twirl around their head and throw it down just so they can, you know... Toxic masculinity. Dominance. Toxic yeah, exactly. masculinity is it? Yeah. Is that all in your shed down there? Exactly. <laughs> no, but the thing is, it's not all places are like that. There's a lot of humble gyms, and there's okay. a lot of places that love to have new people and kind of show people that, you know, this is for everyone. We have people from what ages 12 to 80 years old. Awesome. It's one of those things that it, awesome. If you want to try it, you just have to. You have to just go in, show up, and try it. That's like great. you said earlier, the thing about fitness is that it's not a sprint. It's absolutely a marathon. Um, people um, tell me that uh, there's a way to think about um, you know, self-improvement in so many different ways. But is there a possibility that your, your muscles could move better? You know, it, it never occurred to me that you know, my muscles could move better or my body could feel different. Um, and I think the more you do cross training, CrossFit, Strongman, the the more you're going to experience. Um, you know, it's one of those unknown unknowns. You just never really knew what your body was capable of or how it could feel and stuff. So a lot of it too is just learning how to move properly. I can't tell you how many times I've seen someone just go to grab something off the ground and completely round their back and then stand up. And, oh my back! A lot of it's just learning how to move properly and live properly perfect perfect all right guys well thank you for watching the troy stober show and we'll be back again soon so stay tuned thank you for watching